Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to the very first video edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. I am Billy Embody. Thank you for joining me. As you can tell, I have finally made my move into a house. I've got an office. It's a work in progress. We'll probably have some animals running in and out of uh, this very first uh, video edition, but uh, hopefully they kind of stay a little quiet and want to see what dad's uh, up to as we now We'll begin putting our podcast on our On the Pony Express YouTube channel. So please give us a, sus a sub subscribe. Sorry if I could talk uh, to that channel. I know a lot of you jumped on board when we asked that of you on the On the Pony Express.com message boards. So thank you. Thank you to everyone who's always listened to us on the podcast channel, Spotify, Apple, wherever you catch your podcasts at. And we'll continue to post our podcast there. But I wanted to do the YouTube uh, channel as well, start growing that, maybe make that into something bigger than it already is, which right now is a lot of player interviews, coaches interviews, highlights when we get out to see recruits. Uh, one thing I'll be able to do now with this YouTube channel is probably add in more uh, coaches clips uh, from those interviews and kind of give you guys some context to what I'm talking about. Um, Going to try to make this as fun as possible. Hopefully we can do this live on our on the PonyExpress.com Facebook page, as well as our YouTube channel once I get that all wired up. But for now, you're just getting the recordings. So uh, with that in mind, just wanted to uh, you know give a shout out to everybody who's helped along the way, get this site to where it is. It's growing. It's continuing to grow every week, uh, which is awesome. I know the SMU football team sitting at two and three now uh, isn't always the best time to launch a brand new site. Uh, but we've been at this, you know, for, for nine months, 10 months now. And it's just been an awesome ride. So we're continuing to try and grow the channel, uh, grow the page uh, and grow the site uh, and, and give back to you guys, the subscriber and give you guys the best content, the best way to digest the content. And we hope you guys will enjoy it, uh, especially now that 50% uh, of my life isn't taken over by house hunting and moving. So with that, let's get underway here. Uh, the first YouTube edition of the podcast on theponyexpress.com. Thank you guys for joining us on the podcast. Let's go back and kind of quickly kind of rehash uh, SMU's 41-19 uh, loss to UCF uh, last week. We don't have to really spend too much time on it. Uh, did a long podcast on it um, last week to kind of share a lot of my thoughts. And now that it's Monday, now that we've been out at practice, there's a lot to kind of go over uh, and share with you guys in terms of, you know, where the team is at, um, some of the things that they've tried to do at least to, um, you know, remedy some of the things. Uh, we got to talk with Scott Simons, the defensive coordinator, and Casey Woods today, the offensive coordinator, as well as safety Brian Massey. And I'll just say this, you know, I, I think it's a game that, you know, and there we go, the first animal uh, has entered the chat. SMU really has been I think something of you know not snake bitten because you know a lot of the mistakes they made here and there uh, have been on their own you know whether it be drop passes missed tackles things like that but I, I can at least share from what the coaches are telling us you know they just want to keep hammering home to these guys that the way they played in the first half especially defensively is how this team can really develop into a, a team that can, you know, be a team that challenges for the AAC title on the back end of this slate. You know, they do only have one loss. You know, it's tough to sit here and say they're a contender right now. But look, they've we've covered this. They've played three really good teams. We saw Memphis go down. They were sitting in a really good spot uh, entering, you know, league play. They blew a lead to Houston, uh, who kind of saved their – uh, chances, quite honestly, of, of making a run to an AAC title. Uh, only last year, I believe, um, or, or a couple of years back, had there been a team with multiple losses get into that AAC championship game. It's a tough thing to do. Um, and, you know, SMU, that's why SMU has to win this week against Navy. Uh, but for SMU's players, you know, that, that first half against UCF with the defense was really something to be proud of. You know, the way they played, the way they were able to uh, tackle, hold UCF to 145 total yards of offense, just really impressive. So uh, I got to give a shout out to what Scott Simons and his staff did. Granted, you have to play 60 minutes. And I think the team understands that uh, UCF ended up just quite honestly hitting some of the big plays in the past game that they 
didn't necessarily hit most of the year. Um, you know, they were pretty much a, a live and die by the ground type of team. Uh, and SMU was able to shut that down. You know, John Rice Plumley wasn't able to get going only 30 ish yards. Um, didn't really hit the big play in the pass game until the second half. Defensively, they really shut down uh, that attack in the first half. Uh, and that's while missing opportunities like an interception uh, that would have uh, kept three points off the board. Uh, they, they missed another interception, you know, things like that. So I think looking back at the da- game defensively, they did a lot of good things that they can build off of. And that's their that's their uh, mindset is trying to build off of those things, trying to stay positive uh, because there are a good bit of pieces of it all that they can be proud of, uh, it, quite honestly, uh, just defensively. Offensively, it's a little bit of a different story. A lot of missed opportunities, whether it be drops, whether it be penalties, um, you know, Rasheed Rice's fumble, things like that that held them back from reaching their full potential in terms of what they were able to do, moving the football up and down the field uh, pretty much at will for a lot of that game. The wheels kind of com- came off a little bit in the second half. They weren't able to, to get uh, that same consistency. Um, I think, you know, the pretty much a, a good chunk of what we talked about with Casey Woods in terms of actual on the field stuff was a lot of, okay, how do you fix the red zone? How do you fix that? And from what he told us, and, and quite honestly, maybe we learned a little bit more from L- Rhett Lashley, uh, but a lot of what he shared was, you know, execution and schematics. And I, I've asked a follow up. I said, what are some of the things? Um, and, you know, he said, there's not really too much that they're uh, seeing that is necessarily wrong uh, in what they do. They're seeing a good bit of execution uh, that goes wrong. And they're, they're seeing some things that, at least from me trying to read the tea leaves, is that they could call better plays. But schematically, they're not really sitting there and saying, all right, we need to blow up what we do offensively as a red zone team, um, despite some of the struggles to get it across the goal line for touchdowns rather than field goals. Uh, that obviously you know, hurt them, not being able to get touchdowns when they could have. Scott Simons was telling us, I think he said 28-3 to three is what he really felt that game could have been. Uh, in the first half. And quite honestly, I mean, if all the chips would have fallen SMU's way, probably would would have been, you know, Rasheed Rice could have had a long touchdown. They were on the move on that opening drive um, before that fumble. So there are a lot of different things that could have gone SMU's way, could have gone better. Um, I I think there's been so much in terms of the team with players missing time, reps, practice here or there that – you kind of maybe think, all right, if this team ever has two, three games together, uh, how different does the offense look if there's a Jake Bailey, Jordan Curley, Rasheed Rice, Bo Corrales all running around out there? Um, Trey Siggers is clearly nicked up now. Uh, if you're not uh, uh, an on the PonyExpress.com subscriber, I would recommend checking it out for seven day free trial, see what's going on with him. Uh, we were out of practice on Monday, uh, getting the scoop on the injury. Front Now, something that is out there up in the open that I wanted to share. Last week, we did report four players were expected to redshirt and potentially transfer from the team. One of those players, Chase Cromartie, I think is down that road. He's going to redshirt and transfer, and I don't blame him at all. He's played a lot of football for SMU. Uh, he's got a chance to go play somewhere else eventually and, and finish out his college career, maybe get some more tape um, and get, get a, a bigger role. Uh, to close out his college career. Then Monday came and the fun part of this all kind of, you know, came squarely into focus. Roger Daniels was at practice. He was the other player who was confirmed by sources on staff as going to red shirt and transfer. Instead, he was back out at practice, returning punts, going through drills, and he was a full go at practice. So quite honestly, for me, I think that's a good thing. I think it's good for Rod. I think it's good for SMU. I think there's there was a lot of things going on when this started to kind of gain traction where he said, you know what, I am going to redshirt. I am going to transfer. Uh, I didn't like my role. And what SMU told him was, look, you, you, you have a role if Jake Bailey goes down. And Jake Bailey has has been snake bitten by, by the health bug this year. And once again, he went down uh, and went down early against UCF. And that would have been a lot of snaps for Roderick Daniels. Instead, they went to Dylan Goffney. Uh, who played 60-something snaps in that game. So a good opportunity for him to show what he could do. But 
Now you have Roderick Daniels back. We'll find out more in terms of what happened, how that happened uh, when we talk with Rhett Lashley. But, um, you know, a lot to kind of digest there with Rod because he did leave the team uh, and is now back. Another one, safety, Isaiah Wachovia was at practice, was dressed out. Uh, so we'll see what his role ends up being moving forward. Uh, not quite sure. He's nursing a hamstring injury, but he didn't have a red jersey on. And then Jalen Record was at practice as well on the scout team. He's been there pretty much the whole year. And the good thing about that is he's probably the fastest player on the team, um, pound for pound, side, you know, inch, inch for inch, however you want to put it. So he does a really good job simulating a lot of these guys um, and, and talking with a few sources when all this went down. That was something that, you know, really probably hurt in a way the most because Jaylene was on scout team uh, and he was given those really good looks. So he was back out there on the scout team as well uh, for SMU. So we'll kind of continue to monitor this thing. I still think there's a, a lot up in the air as far as um, what all of those players' futures are long term in the program. But they're back. Uh, at least three or three of the four are. And we'll continue continue to monitor their situations um, as well. I, I will say, I think, you know, the thing about this whole deal is, is just things spiral out of control, right? Last week we saw it reported on, we quite honestly just put out a rosters update thing. Here's what we were hearing. We tried to kind of keep it on the down low. It gets picked up, uh, gets confirmed by other people. And then you have some of the, the, the blogs out there that really run with it, really create a firestorm and, it just wasn't true. I mean, all the anonymous, oh, it's a, you know, things are falling, falling apart. The culture's bad, all that. If you go out to an SME practice and you can watch through the gates um, on the outside, you see a lot of fun. I mean, you don't see a lot of screwing around, anything like that. And we've covered that for a long time with this staff, but you never really see, and you can kind of watch body language. Sometimes when somebody's coached hard, they might roll their eyes. Uh, they might do this, do that. Uh, in, in other scenarios, other situations, other teams, uh, that happens. And you don't really see that much at all. Um, and, and we've spent a ton of time around the program and, and really, you know, getting to see that. So um, this team is, look, they're, they're, you know, down three straight losses. And there's no other way to put it. Um, it sucks for them. I, they had higher expectations going in, but their expectations, you know, to win a championship are, are, are still out there. Uh, to be had if they can manage to get this thing on track. Um, and, and I still think there's a chance. You know, if you're as talented as SMU's team is when healthy. You have the pieces to do it. They've got to come together. You know, I mean, uh, Casey Woods mentioned, you know, they're a missed block or a uh, not not long enough block away from hitting a stretch play for a touchdown. You know, you, we've talked about the drops. Uh, we talked about them a lot on the last podcast. They're, these are all some of these things that, you know, once the players can can manage to hit those, then you, you know, can talk about this team if they can put together a solid, consistent 60 minute effort against good teams being back in that picture. So, again, it's kind of a show me thing. I said that last week when I you know, picked UCF to win and I actually picked them in the preseason to, to beat SMU as well. Um, SMU has to play 60 minutes of consistent football at a high level and they didn't do that. And so you, you, you go down to the bounce house and it wasn't bouncing on Wednesday night, but. Uh, UCF's team was in the second half and they, they took it to SMU. So now you face Navy. They just hung 50 plus on uh, Tulsa. And, uh, you know, just as you kind of get through the stretch and you think, OK, maybe SMU gets a chance to uh, face a Navy team that is maybe a little down on itself, maybe isn't its usual uh, impressive self. Now you have uh, a Navy team that is uh, maybe hitting its stride a little bit offensively, which is scary. Uh, for SMU, they're going to have to be very disciplined. SMU has played Navy pretty well at home uh, over the past few years and few uh, opportunities in this series. We'll see how that translate this, translates this year. Um, SMU, I asked Scott Simons uh, if there was any correlation of defending a, a team that runs as much motion and out of the gun and quarterback run as UCF does, if that helps at all with Navy. He said, nope, absolutely not. Just totally different ball game. Um, and it wasn't too surprising, but I, I figured in terms of gap responsibilities and things like that, it would maybe help a little bit. But SMU is uh, going to have to probably stay in that 3-4 base, which did a really good job against UCF in the first half. UCF ended up going into a, a heavier package in the second a lot more, and that was able to kind of turn the tide on SMU's defense and 
Uh, you know, SMU didn't get as many plays made in the secondary uh, in the second half either. Um, and, and UCF was able to take advantage as we saw, but you know, Navy, they've gone more multiple, they've added some wrinkles uh, and they're starting to see the, the fruits of that labor uh, in terms of making those changes uh, this season. So uh, SMU will face Navy Friday night on ESPN, nationally televised game, a chance to right the ship, a chance to really show um, what they're about. We'll preview that game later on in the week. Um, do want to let you guys know there are multiple other injury updates on the site, including uh, more on Owen Condon, uh, Isaac Slade Matutia, uh, Brandon Crosley, Bo Corrales, Jake Bailey, um, all sorts of uh, players who are banged up for SMU. We've got updates on theponyexpress.com. Check it out. Try uh, free for seven days uh, and you get this sweet hat if you stick around uh, for free while supplies last. So share the site, please. We can use all the subscriptions we can. Uh, get to do fun things like hit the road, uh, covering some SMU recruits, uh, which can't, you know, not everyone else can say, but we're able to do it. A couple weeks ago uh, now, uh, about 10 days ago, was able to go out and see Keldrick Luster, McKinney High quarterback. Not a far trip, obviously, but still, he went out and played magnificent, magnificent, oh man, going to have to cut that one out. He played magnificent. Keldrick Luster, he played incredible uh, when I went out there and uh, caught that McKinney High game against Dent Denton Braswell, 60-51 win for the Lions. And Keldrick Luster, I, I think, really showed me a lot. Uh, he's a gamer, showed me that he is willing to take off and run and make big plays, and he and that he's able uh, to do that as well. You know, that was something that um, obviously he did a lot of at Frisco Liberty uh, last year. Uh, he was, you know, really explosive in that offense. Uh, this year he's in more of a pro-style attack, got a big – couple big running backs back there to hand the ball off to be in the eye formation, but they moved him back to the gun. He was a little bit more comfortable back there. He took off in the second half uh, and scored on a 46 yard touchdown run uh, that really kind of shifted momentum back to McKinney's way because Denton Braswell was scoring at will. Um, I think they were up something like, you know, 14, nothing, maybe even 21, nothing in the first five minutes. And I, I was like, Oh man, of course I picked the game that they're going to get blown out when they're off to a good start. But Instead, they rallied. They were able to uh, circle the wagons, and a lot of that had to do, do with Keldrick Luster. He was incredible. Um, really, really good passer. I, I feel like um, is probably best when he's on the move. I, I think some of the rollouts, some of the things that McKinney did to get him out of the pocket really helped him. Um, but he also has a strong arm. Uh, he can throw it down the middle of the field uh, and, and hit the deep ball and do those things. So I was impressed with SMU's quarterback commit in the class of 2023. Uh, he played really well, got the team a win. Uh, and the guys seem to really rally around him, which is really important to me when watching quarterbacks uh, is how the guys respond. And they really seem to engage well with him. Uh, and they continue to be on the rise uh, this year, already matching their win total from a year ago without Keldrick Luster. Uh, looking to South Florida, Tyler Aronson, SMU's 2024 quarterback commit, coming off a 20 of 31 uh, passing day for 277 yards and three total touchdowns in his team's win. Johnny Brewer was down there to see him before the SMU UCF game. So kind of hitting some of those recruiting uh, check marks, uh, check, checking the boxes uh, when you can, especially with a game like that. So um, that was good for, for Johnny Brewer to get out and see uh, their 2024 commit. Then a couple other things to hit on uh, as far as recruiting goes. Uh, SMU wideout commit Jamarian Carroll. I think you guys know on the site how high I am on him. Uh, he was involved uh, with Wichita Falls Hershey. Uh, and Graham, a really serious situation, uh, some racist comments made uh, in an anonymous forum. So we, we don't really know the extent of all that stuff, um, but it was you know, supposedly from the Graham side of things. Uh, that eventually sparked a, um, that was around a brawl uh, that happened in the game. Um, and Jamar and Carroll had, had gone back to defend a pass that, had, that was interception, inter intercepted tackled the opposing player. Opposing player didn't like that, threw some punches at him. Jamarian fought back, benches cleared, uh, and it was uh, the game was eventually called. So, look, I'll say this. Uh, having interviewed Jamarian, what a great kid, great prospect. I mean, obviously, on both sides, you wish, like, one that nothing like that ever happens. Uh, but, um, quite honestly, I, I kind of like him sticking up for himself. 
um, there. So uh, he, he wasn't going to back down. Uh, he's a physical receiver. He makes plays. Um, was pretty quiet that night overall. Um, but uh, he's, he's having a really good senior year, at least in my mind. Uh, so we'll see kind of what happens there. Uh, UIL is going to look at it um, and, and hand down some rulings. It wouldn't shock me if he probably got a game or something like that, quite honestly, just because he was at the center of it. A lot of other players were too uh, on both sides. So um, the film will come out and we'll, we'll see kind of, you know, if he ends up having to sit or whatnot. But um, continuing with the SMU pass catchers in the 2023 class, having big games. Trip Reardon has been on a tear, playing really well. Uh, they just beat Frisco Liberty 59-21. Uh, uh, Reardon, four catches, 78 yards, and a touchdown on the win. Uh, he's having a really good senior year. Very, very productive for a tight end. So uh, he's a big body. I saw him in the spring seven on seven. I didn't love what I saw. I know that's a that's not necessarily a um, a setting that's geared for him, but um, you know he's he's backing it up on the field this year. So SMU desperately needs some tight end help. He could be the latest uh, true freshman to you know step in right away and play um, a big role uh, in this offense because SMU needs the tight end help uh, in, in, in a big, big way. So uh, shout out Trip Reardon. We're going to have him on the podcast. We're going to have a couple of these guys on the podcast here now that we're full video. It'll be a lot, a lot of fun to interact with them a little bit uh, in this setting too. Finally, Jaden Milner-Jones. DeSoto almost shut out uh, their opponent last week. Craig Niver was in the stands watching him uh, you know, get out there and play for the Eagles. He's had a really good season. I think he's somebody that could end up moving up to the box, kind of be an in-the-box safety, play a little bit of that kind of Brian Massey nickel role, uh, just put, kind of play all over, honestly, and and is very comfortable near the line of scrimmage. So um, really impressed with what I've seen from Jaden Milner-Jones. So I wanted to pass that along that SMU was also evaluating him uh, over the course of uh, their bye week weekend in recruiting. We'll uh, pass some notes along if we do get them as far as where the rest of the staff was in terms of uh, valuations and watching players. I'm sure they were out seeing most of their commits, um, but that kind of does it as far as the recruiting side of things. Lastly, SMU basketball Tuesday uh, has media day uh, with the media in town. We'll be, be there covering it. And then the uh, open practice for media and high school coaches is Tuesday afternoon. We'll be there as well to catch that. We'll have all your notes and coverage of that on theponyexpress.com. Be sure to check it out. Guys, uh, this is it. This is the, the first video podcast uh, for On The Pony Express. We did it. We made it through. We had one cat meow and no uh, dog roll through and uh, no Amazon man. Uh, get the dog going. Uh, my dog Ace, uh, who's been with me uh, long before I've, I've even started covering SMU. So with that, guys, going to wrap up this edition of the podcast. Please give me your feedback. What do you want to see? What do you want to uh, do? We've got this TV monitor. I'm going to try to get a bigger one. Sorry, guys. Um, we could probably do some video type stuff, you know, going out and seeing these high school prospects. I'm going to have more film. Like I told you guys, going to try to add in some video clips of what the coaches actually say versus me just regurgitating some of it. Um, we'll do some fun things on this one. Um, hopefully, you know, here and there, we'll do a watch party uh, for the game as well. Do something live uh, for those of you sitting at home here and there. Maybe we fire that up in basketball season, but that's it. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate you guys listening. Uh, hit that subscribe button to our YouTube page, please. So I can start getting, making some money off of this and, you know, getting this thing rolling helps pay for travel, helps pay for, uh, you know, everything that uh, it takes to run the site. So appreciate you guys watching and listening and uh, hope you guys enjoyed this edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. Catch you next time.